Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to talk about autoimmune hepatitis and everything you need to know about the disease as a medical student. As we can see from its name, it is the inflammation of the liver caused by an underlying autoimmune reaction. In a healthy person, your immune system is supposed to attack the bacteria and viruses invading your body. But in autoimmune hepatitis, your immune system starts attacking the liver cells by mistake causing inflammation in the liver, leading to necrosis, fibrosis, and eventually cirrhosis if it's left untreated. As it is an autoimmune disease, it is often associated with a history of other autoimmune diseases, especially celiac disease, inflammatory bowel disease, Hashimoto thyroiditis, Graves disease, SLE, Chagrin syndrome, and rheumatoid arthritis. Also, it is known to be associated with a history of infections, especially measles, harpy simplex, AB virus, and hepatitis viruses. Additionally, hereditary factors are also known to be associated with autoimmune hepatitis, especially having HLA, DR3 and 4. As with most other autoimmune diseases, autoimmune hepatitis is also more commonly seen in female. So what are the signs and symptoms of autoimmune hepatitis? The symptoms may vary from person to person, and in some people, it might be asymptomatic, and in some people, you can see very unspecific symptoms such as fever, malaise, and fatigue. And as there is an inflammation going on in your liver, you may see upper right quadrant abdominal pain and swelling, as well as inflammation reactions such as an increase in CRP and ESR. And also, you can see joint pain and skin rashes as it is an autoimmune condition, also, the liver is supposed to detoxify and metabolize the toxins, and as it can't function well, you may see acne and other skin conditions. You may also remember amenorrhea, as women with severe liver disease may often show amenorrhea. If the disease progresses to cirrhosis, we can start to see the signs and symptoms of cirrhosis. The liver is an organ where albumin, cholinesterase, cholesterol, and clotting factors are produced. So in cirrhosis, we can see a decrease in all of them. Also, we can see an increase in ammonia causing hepatic encephalopathy, and also an increase in bilirubin and bile salt causing jaundice and itching. And also, there is an increase in estrogen, so we can see gynecomastia, palma erythema, etc. And if there is portal hypertension, then ascites, caput medusae, esophageal varices, and edema, etc. can be seen. Okay, next, let's see the clinical findings of the disease and how we diagnose it. Firstly, let's run a blood test and see the liver function tests. We can see an increase in the amino transferases very prominently, but as for ALP and gamma GTP, they are usually normal, or even if there is an elevation, it, it may be a very slight elevation because it is an inflammation in the liver. And we can see the antibodies of this disease. We can see an increase in IgG, and we can see these types of antibodies. So in autoimmune hepatitis, there's two types, type 1 and type 2. Type 1 is known as the adult onset, and type 2 is known as the juvenile onset. And in type 1, we can see anti-nuclear antibodies, anti-smooth muscle antibodies, and Pianka antibodies. They are all seen in type 1. And in type 2, we should remember anti-LKM type 1 antibodies, which is also known as anti-liver, anti-kidney microsome type 1 antibodies, and anti-LC type 1 antibodies, which means anti-liver cytosol antibodies. As for definitive diagnosis, we should run a liver biopsy. The keywords of the findings of liver biopsy include portal plasma cell-rich inflammation with interface hepatitis and bridging necrosis and multinodular necrosis which means the necrosis may become confluent involving more than one zone inside a lobule, or it might just extend from one lobule to another, thus we call it multinodular necrosis. We can also see amperipolysis, which means there is an intact cell within the cytoplasm of another cell. And also we can see cholestasis. So let's see what are the treatments of this disease. As with other autoimmune diseases, corticosteroids come as the first choice, and we can use prednisolone. And in patients who can use steroids, or if the steroid treatment failed, we can combine it with immunosuppressants, such as azathioprine. And then, if all the treatments failed, we can use liver transplant as a last resort. Okay, so let's see the overview of the autoimmune hepatitis. The risk factors include being female and having a history of infection such as measles, herpes simplex, 
EB virus hepatitis A, B, C, and having HLA-DR3 and 4, and having a history of autoimmune diseases such as celiac disease, IBD, Hashimoto thyroiditis, Graves disease, SLE Chagrin syndrome, and rheumatoid arthritis. And the clinical findings include an increase in ASD, ALT, and there is an increase in the IgG, and we should remember anti-nuclear antibodies, anti-smooth muscle antibodies, PNCA, and anti-LKM type 1 antibodies, anti-LC type 1 antibodies. And there are two types, type 1 and type 2, which is adult onset and juvenile onset respectively. The, we should run liver biopsy for definitive diagnosis and you should remember these keywords. And also the signs and symptoms may vary from person to person which may be asymptomatic or have the fever, malaise, fatigue or just symptoms of the inflammation of the liver or you can also see the signs and symptoms of cirrhosis if it's if it has progressed to cirrhosis. And the treatments include corticosteroids, immunosuppressants, and liver transplant as a last resort. Okay, so this is all for my video. If you liked this video, please don't forget to give a thumbs up or just comment in the video. It would be very nice if you could subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.